All of these Lego sets that I have in front of me, I bought completely used. Some are used by collectors and were displayed heavily, leaving lots of yellowing, while others were kept in the dark corner of the room. Some were played with a bunch, chewed up by something, or were just completely left untouched and are in perfect condition. With Lego being as expensive as it is, even new, buying sets that are older than a few years is incredibly challenging, especially to get it at an affordable price. So is buying used worth it or is it too dangerous and too stupid to try? Let's talk about it. Part one, the yellowing. These days, yellowing is just a part of Lego life, especially with white pieces and lighter grays, which unfortunately Lego Star Wars has a ton of. Unless highly protected, Legos on display will just catch the sun in a bunch of different ways and will end up looking slightly more yellow than they were originally. But should that stop you from buying someone's used Lego that's been on display? In that vein, it can depend on how used it actually is, like this boat that was left in the sun for many hours and looks like your dog peed on it. To this extent, the piece is more or less ruined. You can see where there were no pieces covering up the gray and it's just completely yellowed over. Other ways the yellowing can be a little bit more subtle. You can take a picture with the right lighting, a certain angle, or the perfect white balance and it'll look perfectly normal. But then by the time you bought it, it'll be too late and you'll take it home to realize that your new white pieces look much whiter than this wing does. That can be a huge downside, but displaying Lego is one of the best parts about it. Especially on shelves like this, where you can see everything or display a bunch of stuff all together, it looks great. But doing this could potentially expose it to some yellowing. So can we really fault someone for having a slightly yellow piece? Not really. And therein lies the issue. If you want to display your Lego, if it's white or light gray, it probably yellows. But should that stop you from buying someone's used Lego set? I don't think so. That's the thing though. If yellowing is inevitable, no matter how you use your Lego set, then why does it matter if the one you buy is slightly yellowed used on Facebook Marketplace or on eBay? These things aren't meant to last forever, and they won't stay pristine forever either. That being said, they can be kind of annoying to clean. Part 2. Dust and Dirt Blech, Gross! Dust and dirt are a part of life, and unfortunately, they are a huge part of Lego life, especially with the studs. Ugh, so gross. Dust can be a pretty big issue, especially when you're buying used. A lot of collectors might not want to have to clean up their stuff before they get rid of it. Some dust can be hard to see, especially on white. But do you want the hassle of having to clean that up if you buy used? But not just dust, any kind of dirt can be annoying to pull off Lego, especially if you have to take it all apart and wash it. This can be a problem with buying anything used, but you'll never quite know what that stain is. The dust and debris may vary, and some sellers are really good about cleaning sets, while others not so much. So you could end up with a finger like me, or you could end up with something really clean. But still, should that keep you away from used sets? Perhaps not. It may be dirty, but it's not impossible to clean, and you could get something for a really good deal if it's a little dirtier than other people would want to pay for. Or you could find something like this, my Obi-Wan Starfighter that looked exquisite upon arrival. And that's where another downside can come in. If you buy a used Lego from someone like me, then you might end up getting a set that's like this, which doesn't look too bad from here, but when you get closer, it's pretty gross. Thus our question would be, is it worth it to you to pay a little bit higher premium to not have to clean something? Or is it better to just have a little bit of dirt, do some cleaning, and save lots of money? For me, I think I'm good to take a little bit of savings with a little bit of added cleaning time. Part three, problematic pieces. Some sets might be dirty, but salvageable, where others, if you get the wrong pieces or not enough pieces, it can be a headache to try to part them out on a brick link and figure out what you're missing. But unfortunately, the dirt and grum isn't always our number one worry. Sometimes we could get sets with missing pieces or broken ones. Yellowing, dust, those are all done by nature, but broken pieces or missing ones? Now those can just be disappointing. Some sets have specialized pieces and can get stressed out over time, like this seaweed. Sure, it's old, but we want good condition, right? Some pieces aren't too hard to find and can be really easy to part out on BrickLink. So is it worth it to have a few missing pieces to save some more dollars? Then other pieces are heavily specialized and printed. And if those ones are scratched or scuffed, they can be extremely hard to replace. At that point, why save some money if you're gonna get something that's not going to work. At a certain point, there is good and bad with buying Lego sets with not enough pieces, wrong pieces, or destroyed pieces. You can get something really lucky and have just the right pieces you need to make it all together, or you can have a massive headache on your hands with expensive parts that you need to replace. Part 4, Minifigure Mayhem. But of course, as always, the best part of any Lego set is the minifigures. 
The minifig market seems to be larger than even the set market nowadays, and with so many used figures out there, there's a lot of sellers trying to scam you or just sell you something that's not really what it's supposed to be. There are also awesome, amazing sellers making available some of the hardest to find minifigures at decent prices. With that said, I think minifigures are one of the number one most things to be wary about when buying Lego sets, because they could really come in many different shapes and conditions. Some minifigures could be absolutely flawless. Chrome lightsabers intact, all of the printing, everything looks amazing. They're just perfect. There are then others whose outside appearances look fantastic, but the closer you get, the more scuffs and the more cracks that you find. Some minifigures come with expensive pieces like pricey helmets, but then cracked arms or wrong arms altogether. However, unfortunately, some sellers are extremely misleading. They will take pictures to make things look much better than they actually are, or perhaps skew the truth of the reality of their minifigures. How the head of this Qui-Gon Jinn had an unseen bite mark, or a fake like a lightsaber, or how Jar Jar's feet look like you thought they were a tasty snack. To me, minifigures are extremely important, and unfortunately, the cheapest ones are also in the worst condition. So, is it worth it saving a little bit of money to getting a figure that's not quite up to par? In this instance, I would say no. If you're going to buy used, make sure that the figures you buy are in much better condition than some of these. Definitely don't buy ones that have bite marks, and always watch out for sellers that are looking for a quick buck. With all that said, it doesn't sound like there are any good reasons to buy used LEGO, right? But that's where you'd be wrong. Obviously, price is a huge reason to buy used LEGO, and something we've touched on heavily already. But there's also another thing and that's community. This box wouldn't even be in my possession unless it were for another collector just like me who saved it for a really long time. To me, I don't see a dirty box, I see childhood memories. Sure, you can get that with something new, but the community aspect here is being able to share your love of LEGO Star Wars with someone else, or just any LEGO in general. And buying used can help keep some of this stuff out of the trash and right on your display shelf, keeping some of those memories fresh and new. Just look at these manuals, things that I wouldn't have unless a collector decided to keep them. These old manuals that have since probably disappeared or would be really expensive to find in a new box, I can now have for a pretty cheap price. And I can enjoy Lego with someone else who had the same hobby when I was a kid. This thing is from 2002. Lego used to include these in the box and it's awesome. It showcases a whole bunch of Lego sets and it's even a great way to buy new sets that you've never seen before or figure out what you're looking for next. And that all comes from community, someone else sharing their love of Lego with you. Being able to pay a lesser price might just be enough for you. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you only buying new sets? Are you willing to buy used? Hit that subscribe button down below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.